Hey everyone, welcome back for another UE4 tutorial. In this one of episode, we're going to cover how to make a day night cycle. So, we're going to use the sky sphere to accomplish the day night cycle, and I'll give you a demonstration of how it works. So, with it, my, day, my sky sphere, we have settings here to say use day cycle, use real time, and day speed. So, to give you a demonstration of it going a bit quicker, we can see if I change my day speed, I can make the time of day change. Where's my son? There it is. Go below, and it'll go around on a loop, creating a day's night cycle. Okay, so to get started, we first have to figure out how the sun actually works inside Unreal Engine 4, looking at the sky sphere and the directional light. So a sky sphere is an engine-based content. Um, what that means is that uh, if you change the blueprint of the sky sphere, it will affect it for all your projects of that same version. Um, but we're going to do a workaround for that in a moment. The directional light here is what is associated to that sky sphere. So on the sky sphere here, you'll see on the details panel, it says directional light actor, and that is linked to this directional light actor. So if I was to rotate this directional light actor, you see the daytime changes. Okay, and when I do that, you'll notice the sky doesn't change with it. Now the reason why is because we have to tell it to refresh its material to match what is happening with the uh, light. So if I was to turn it to night time, so when it's pointing up, night time, the level's in night time, but the sky isn't. So I have to click on the sky sphere and hit refresh to see the night time. So that's how it works, and we need to know that information to be able to move forward with our plans. So to start off with, you're going to need to set the directional light to face up directly um, as much as possible. So uh, 90 in the Y, and 0 in X and Z, okay? And that would be midnight, okay? So 0, 90, 0 is midnight, and that's going to be our starting position of the day. Now, to get the Sky Sphere, a copy of it, so we can use it for our own world, uh, you have to go into the engine content. Now, to access the engine content, you have to go down to where it says View Options in your content browser, click on this, and you'll see Show Engine Content. Tick this box. With that box ticked, you can now expand the sources panel and you'll see engine content. Click on here and just type in the search box here, sky, and you'll see sky sphere. Now you want to drag and copy this into your content folder. So you've got your own sky sphere object here. So I'm just going to clear my search results and hide that panel. And so I don't get confused, I'm just going to la label this my sky sphere okay now to put that into the scene so i'm going to delete the old one and put the new one in setting my light source actor as such okay so it's exactly as it was before now we can edit this one to include our day night cycle so we're going to open this one up and have a look at what we got so in a sky sphere you don't have nothing in the event graph by default next though you have the construction script so the construction script means that whenever you change something inside the engine whilst you're editing it, um, this will update the material or actor necessarily. Okay, um, and you've got a load of variables already built into it, and these are the various settings that you can change about your sky sphere. So nothing, nothing strange or weird. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Okay, so the first thing we need to go is go into our event graph, and also need to set up some variables. So we need three variables. First one is going to be a boolean, okay, and say use uh, day cycle, which will allow us to turn it off and on based on whether the level designer wants it to be a day night cycle. Another one for use real time, and use real time means it's going to be um, allow you to tick on and allow the game to be set to whatever the time is in your current time zone okay so the sun will be in the right position as it is in real world so the third variable is going to be day speed and at day speed we can leave that as a float with the default value so compile it and go to default value and change it to one okay okay so we need to make a begin play event so begin play 
and at the start of the game we need to test whether or not we have got a use day cycle as true or false so drag use day cycle out and choose get and put this into a branch if it's true we want to start the day uh, cycle and if it's false we want to just ignore it so we need to create a new event so right click and go custom event and we'll call it start day and on the start day we can call that from our event begin play so use day cycle is true start day and it's calling it from here to there so start day is what's going to be handling the whole uh, logic behind the day cycle so on the start day event we're going to come out of here and we're going to add a timeline and I'm going to call it day cycle the timeline is a uh, it, it changes the value over a certain amount of time okay what that value is we can change by double click on the timeline now this is blank at start so we need to add one of these to our tracks so we're going to say add a float track and uh, call it time rule of day and we need to make two points on this one at zero and another one at one second so at zero shift oh left click and set time to zero and value to zero and then find the one second mark shift click again time is one and value as 360 now why 360 well if we think about a rotation of our light actor to get a full day it starts at up which is midnight a full day is midnight midnight so through a full loop which is 360 degrees of rotation um, I'm gonna click these two buttons here so you can see the graph there it is uh, length I'm gonna change that to match the length of the timeline so it's one and we're done here so we can click the close button okay um, so start day needs to go to play from start so move that from there to play from start that way on each day it will start from the very beginning of the timeline not where it last ended up on the update we now see the time of day is a float track coming out of our timeline and on the update we can t tell our directional light actor to change its rotation so you'll find that reference to the directional light actor in your variable list so drag this out and choose get and then from there we can set rotation plug it into the update and I'm going to right click on my new rotation and split and I can put that into the Y like so and on the when it's finished we want it to start the day again so on the finished just come out of here and go start day okay click compile and let's see how this looks Okay, now the reason why it doesn't work is because we haven't changed something about our light. Now, when you first introduce a directional light actor, you'll see that it's stationary. We need to make this movable so the engine is allowed to move it. So make that movable and click play again. It's still not working. Why is that not working? Okay, so that weren't working. Uh, the reason why is because I've made a boo-boo and forgot to turn on our day cycle so make these editable or three of the new ones we added compile it click on your sky sphere and we can tick the use day cycle and that's true you can see the day is going around now notice the lighting's changing because the directional light actor is changing but the sky isn't the sky is staying the same so what's up with that well that's because if you remember rightly we have this refresh material button we we'll click on that to make it update the, uh, the material of the sky. So we need to do that at the end of each update. Now to accomplish that, all that stuff's happening on the uh, construction script, which is no good. We want it to be on its own function, so we can call it whenever we want. So from the end, copy, or select, sorry, all of it <coughs> up to this branch here. So let's set that, and I'm going to cut it from there <clears throat> and I'm going to add a function called um, refresh material 
and I'm going to plug that into what we just cut. Compile this, go to construction script, and add your refresh material to the end. Like so, of where we cut. Compile that, and now daytime. It's still not working. Why is that not working? Do, do, do. Oh, yeah, I didn't actually add it. Oh, so add your refresh material to the update. There we go. There we go. Okay, so you see the sun going past. So what this is currently doing is doing one day in one second. Okay, so obviously that's not ideal. It's kind of trippy and of course people have fits. So we don't want to do that. We want to slow it down. Now, what we're going to do is change the play rate of our day cycle. So when you create a timeline, it actually creates a variable for you called where the, where the name is of your timeline. So you'll see day cycle here in our variables. So drag this out and choose get. And then from there, you'll see set play rate. And we can hook that up like so. <coughs> and the play rate is going to be something a bit special. So the play rate is we have to change it based on how many seconds are in a day. So if this is doing one second equals one day, we need to do um, a, a much slower uh, play rate. So how many seconds are there in a day? Well, on a calculator, we can do 24 hours times 60 minutes. Gives us how many minutes are in a day. It times it by 60 again, and it gives us how many seconds in a day. So it's 86,400. So on the new rate, we'll drag this out, and you want to do a division. And it'll be 1 divided by 86400. Compile. And let's go back to the game. So now it's going a lot slower. Now the reason why it's going a lot, uh, you're not changing much is because it's going at the real time speed. Meaning it will take 24 hours for that sun to cross the sky. Which is a long time, so we don't want really that either. But you can, if you want that, if that's what you're going for, you can make it so it goes real time. That's how you do it. <clears throat> so day speed though is going to be of what we use to uh, change and tweak that uh, speed of the day so drag your day speed variable out if you remember its default is one so what we're going to do is do this times float and it's going to be 86400 in there and that will plug into our bottom of our division here so if our day speed is 0 0.5 this will give us half the day in seconds so it will be a lot it'd be half as slow so it take 12 hours so to demonstrate this if I change my day speed now to 0 0.002, I think it look, looks all right. I can't remember now. Might be still a bit too slow. Yeah, a bit too slow still. Let's go. Uh, oh. Put another 0 in there. There we go. So you can see it's going night time. And try to work out where the sun is. There it is. And we can see the day. It's changing. And around it goes. So that's how we get a basic day night cycle. And if you want to leave it there, you can leave it there. But we're going to go a little bit further and add the ability to use the real time clock. So using the clock that we've currently got on our game. And you also notice it starts the day at, um, at the horizon. We don't want it to start there, we want it to start at midnight. So before we get started with the real time clock, let's look at fixing it so it starts at midnight, not at the horizon. Now the reason why it starts at the horizon, <coughs> it's because of the rotation. It's because the rotation of this actor here at zero, 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 is at sort of uh, like a, is at uh, at horizon. But that's not realistic what we want. What we want is 90 degrees added to our rotation. So in the sky sphere blueprint, we're going to add a rotator to this uh, rotation. So I'm disconnect this and recombine it. And then from your new rotation, you're going to do combine rotators. And we're going to split A by right clicking, choosing split. 
Now time of day will go into Y, and we will rotate the B value of Y by 90. So now the day will start at midnight rather than at the horizon. See, it's night time, dawn, and midday, and so on and so forth. Okay, so that's that fixed. Now finally go on to creating the real-time clock. So the real-time clock is quite simple. All we have to do is get the actual clock time that the computer is currently at. So if we right-click here and choose Now, this will return the current time that we have. If we come from the return value and uh, we go time and it is get time of day. And this gets the amount of time that's elapsed since midnight of that day. And from there, we can get the seconds. We want to get the total seconds. To get how many seconds have actually passed in that day. And what we do is we divide this by another float, which is going to be 86,400, because that's how many seconds are in a day. So if we only had half the seconds in the day, we've got halfway through the day, this would be whether half of 86,400 is over 86,400, meaning that this will return 0.5. So meaning the new time will then start halfway through the day. So drag this into new time like so. Now we need to be able to toggle this to actually work because timelines by default won't use this. We have to use a set new time here. So we're going to use this real time boolean we made before. Drag it out, just get into a branch and hook up the play, to, uh, play rate to the start of that branch. And if we if you if use real time is false, we're going to go to play from start. If it's true, we're going to do a sequence. Because we need to do two things. The first thing we need to do is set the new time. And then the second thing we need to do is play. So we can go to play. And that will play from the new time that we've set. So I click compile and go back to our game. I'm going to select my sky sphere. I'm going to turn on use real time, like so. And I'm going to change that day speed back to one so we can see what the clock is like in my real time. So at the moment it's 8.15 in the morning uh, where I am now. Hit play and I should get a morning like sun. There we go, it's in the morning. And if I left this running, that would slowly creep across the sky, matching the time that is currently on my client, which is where I am right now. Big shout out and thank you to Alex Ponomarev, Jacob Gonzalez, and Michael Cumbus for supporting me with the higher tiers on Patreon. We couldn't be doing it without you guys. Big thank you and big shout out to you guys. Um, get me closer and closer to be able to do this full time for, for you all and uh, making a bit more videos for you all as well. So big thank you to all of you guys, including all my patrons as well, all my rest of my patrons. Big thank you to all of you. If you want to support me, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Ailey where you get to see more videos before anyone else. You get to see uh, access to our Discord uh, and many other benefits too um, all, right, all over the place. So thanks very much to everyone supporting me thus far. Couldn't be doing it without you guys. Um, thanks again and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.